just curious, so you made relationships as far as you got those APD cameras and mm -hmm. Renew and Land and all that. Does that still exist? Do you still have those things? Or it does. Sort of it does still exist. Do you want it? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> of course I want it. Yeah. Yeah. We, that, that was a huge deal. We had been working on that for years, and we could never sort of break down that barrier where it's, you know, APD's had these cameras out there for a long time. They keep deploying more, and they're on their own management software, their own management system, and we can never get through to them to say, hey, can we just, you know, let's get behind your firewall and we can pull your feeds in. We're not going to record anything. We're not, we're just going to access the feed to see what's going on. And in the lead up to this event, ultimately they said, okay, yeah, we can do that. And um, it's still there. So I think the number of cameras on Navigator uh, went from 1,300 to over 3,000 uh, just from the surveillance cameras that we were able to pull in. It was a tremendous amount of cameras. So, so it's integrated in Navigator? It's not integrated in that. We have, we have to access it through a different login. It's not fully integrated, but we now have access to that. On the partnership you didn't mention MARTA or Transit at all. Were you guys talking with each other? Or? Yeah, I, I should have, and I apologize for that. Absolutely. Um, you know that we we knew that with certain events that well, again, the Super Bowl is different, and we knew that, and that was that was going in that folks were wanting to take their ride share, their taxi, their all that kind of thing. But we also knew that certain events were just going to draw a large number of people to, to areas of town, like the Foo Fighters concert in Atlantic Station was going to put a heavy load on uh, our center station in Midtown, right? So part of, part of what we were doing is essentially just coordinating with MARTA that here's the events that we know in coordinating with the Super Bowl uh, host committee. Let's try to, you know, over, over serve from a transit perspective, either from a train perspective or a bus perspective, these applicable routes, knowing that ingress is gonna occur during this particular time, egress is gonna occur during, you know, this particular time. So let's try to have either have buses stacked up or trains stacked up to over serve during those very heavy time periods to get people where they're trying to go. Mm -hmm. so. But were you doing anything with their signals? Because that sounds like a MARTA. Oh, yeah, yeah. We were not, uh, the buses were within the traffic stream, so as we were managing the overall traffic, we were handling that holistically. We were not running uh, preemption or anything like that for just the uh, general transit buses. Did you have to do anything different because the number of rides? What changed it was, was essentially where the vehicles were going. Well, one, you got more vehicles in the road. Because as much as you try to manage ride share, everybody just wants to get to, oh, I'm out front of where I'm trying to go, just let me out. You know, so they'll block a lane to get, so we had to work with uh, APD and folks like that to try to operate ride share pick up and drop off, which is a very difficult thing to do. There were also designated ride share locations that were established. Like if you were going to the actual Super Bowl event area, they were all being directed to one particular location, or maybe it's like two or three particular locations on, on either side of it. So it's just kind of where the vehicles were going were going to be different than what you would typically expect. So we just had to manage that differently. And then anticipate that where they were going, we were going to have very poor operations because they were just going to you know, block lanes as they, as they wanted to. So I was curious, as the, the Super Bowl, of course, was a big event and all exciting, but we don't have one of those every year. Mm -hmm. We do, however, have kind of more smaller events. I mean, we have weather events, snowstorms, tornadoes, et cetera, but we also have first day of school, last day of school. Is Are we able to take the lessons that we learned from the Super Bowl and translate that into yeah. a more operational benefit to the city of Atlanta? Yeah, and I think that's one of the beauties of, of the platforms that have been established, uh, the, the software that's out there now, the technology, the communication, is that it's scalable and can be translated to any event. Right. So as part of the playbook in the lead up to the Super Bowl as we were managing various things, you know, tiers were established of events of under 30,000 people or events of 50,000 people or 100,000 people. And all of those would trigger different plans that we would put into place. And that could be translated to anything moving forward. And that's the, that's the goal is that this was a huge lift for us to try to plan for the Super Bowl because it's a, a big event, a big deal. Um, but ultimately we feel like we can use this technology and just have this type of response for day-to-day -day life for anything that goes on. This is this is downtown Metro Atlanta. There's something big happening in this town every day, right? So let's try to manage it because we can. 
Um, so that's that's the goal. And I think the lessons we learned here and have learned through some of these other events are absolutely translatable moving forward. Yeah. One other question is, uh, originally a destination. So when you deal with two different situations, probably when the Sunday night with the ball game, you know what's the destination you want to go. And there's an origin probably coming from different places. So the first question is, did you try to know the origin? Because you, you know that where they're going to go destination. And that's the first question. Second is that this one here, as well as 10 days, every day there is a different event. Yeah. Probably you have no idea where's the origin destination. Yeah, we did. This too is a little bit different. Yeah. Are you handling that differently? Uh, we did not specifically track origin destination okay. um, because, again, we did not see this as a typical event. We didn't anticipate you know, 70,000 people coming in from just around the region to one location, with the exception of the, the game itself. Mm -hmm. um, it was very different than that. So this was more, more so real-time operation of the system itself, depending on what was going on. We had an idea and we were able to model somewhat what we thought would happen to have baseline plans established, but then we would tweak from there based on what was going on. Um, but we were not tracking, okay, we got 10,000 people coming in from Cobb County to do this, because honestly, the Super Bowl did, doesn't play out that way. You don't have 10,000 people coming in from a given area. I mean, for the people that attended the Super Bowl game itself, I bet the percentage that actually lived in Metro Atlanta was fairly small. So they, they were already in town, so to speak. So all of this is a real time operation. Yeah. You talked about your Mercedes Benz disaster plan. What was your ice storm management plan? <laughs> <laughs> we had that we had that in place as well. Um, and that was we actually started to stand that up the Tuesday before the game. I don't know if you remember that, but there was the threat of ice uh, about five days before. Uh, part of what we had to do, and this was in our proposal to the Super Bowl, or to the NFL to get the Super Bowl, was how would we manage snow and ice if it, if it were to occur? Going all the way to which roads would be treated by who, who would treat sidewalks, um, who would treat essentially every asset within the region to deal with that. Um, so we had that plan in place as well. And that was part of if we had to get into emergency operations, there was the weather operation as well that we would have to, to essentially translate into. It was there. Because that didn't work so well 20 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> okay, since so this is a exciting talk and uh, there's a lot of discussion, please join me. Uh, thank you. Okay, we'll stop it here. Okay, thanks.